Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.2. In this video, we're going to explore how we can build uh, objects using our basic components, and then how to transfer all that code uh, into a function so we can repeatedly call the function to generate these objects. So let's get to it. So we got our basic template with our connection to our script.js. Uh, I've removed the, the sphere, the box, and the cylinder, and pretty much all we have is just a plane in the sky. In our script file, we have our variable scene that connects us to the A scene. If you're, and if you remember from the previous lesson, all our components have to go in here, which is why we had to grab this element. We have our window on load, which will get fired off when the page loads up. And the first thing that we do inside of here is to actually grab that uh, a scene element. I think it'd be nice for this particular uh, world, let's create some trees. Now if you remember from your uh, lesson one uh, A-frame video series, there is an element called an entity uh, that works as a placeholder, a container for other components. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to make our tree variable, our entity, our container for all those basic components we're going to use to create the tree. All right. So here's our entity. Now let's go ahead and let's start off with the trunk. And I think a good shape for the component for the trunk would be the cylinder. Now, you might be tempted to run the program here, and we're going to go ahead and do it. All right, so um, you might say, well, where's my cylinder? You know, a good guess would be, oh, maybe it's right in our same position, so we have to move around a little bit. But you'll notice if you move around in the world, uh, there's no cylinder. Because we've missed one crucial step here, uh, which is to actually add what we've created to the scene. But we're going to do this a little bit differently. Uh, in the previous video, um, as we created elements, we added them to the scene. In this case, in this video, we're going to add things to the entity first. Uh, but the nice thing is that it uses the same technique. So we're going to say tree dot append the trunk. So we're putting the trunk inside the tree, and now we can add the tree to the scene. And now if we back out, we do see the, the trunk there, and we notice one thing immediately is the fact that um, it's white. So let's switch it up. Uh, so this gives us an opportunity to practice the attribute, set attribute function. And let's modify the color. Let's make this brown. Uh, it also looks like the trunk is a little bit on the thick side. So let's slim it down some. So we use the height attribute, uh, actually no, the radius attribute to slim it down. Uh, let's make it half. And while we're here, let's make the trunk a little bigger as well. Uh, let's try two. And let's just give it a go. All right, so not bad. Uh, so we got a chance to you know, create the, the cylinder for the trunk. We've made some modifications. The trunk is being added to the tree. And then the tree is being added to the scene. So now we got to work on the next part. <clears throat> So we got to create some pines for this tree. So we can use the create element again, because now it's a whole new component uh, that we want to use for the pines. And I think the cone uh, would be nice for this. And Well, let's do it like this. <laughs> I was going to demonstrate what happens if you don't add it to the trunk. Um, but I think at this point, I mean, you kind of realize uh, we have to add things, uh, not to the trunk, to the tree uh, as we create them. 
And we know that we're going to have to modify some attributes for it. Uh, so the first thing, we know it's going to be white. So we got to change the color. So let's make it green. And let me use green like this uh, with the RGB. Uh, let's say 100 and 0. We could always modify the color a little bit later. Uh, we're probably going to have to change the height of it too. Again, these are all things you can explore uh, slowly as you go through. So let's make the height. Let's make the height too. See what that looks like. And the most important one, uh, which does take a little bit of time to uh, get used to, is working with the position. Because unlike all the other attributes we've been uh, we've seen in this video so far, they're single values. The position requires a JSON where you specify the X value the y value, so we're going to bring it up a little bit, uh, and the z value. Again, and we do this using a JSON. So let's see. So we've created the element. We've changed some attributes. We added the pines to the tree. We added the trunk, trunk to the tree, and we've added the tree to the scene. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> All right, so a um, couple of things we got to do here. We probably got to move this up a little bit more. Let's try that out. Okay, not too bad. I could, I could live with that tree. Now, the last thing I want to do, uh, let's say I want to move the tree completely around. So I can also now do a set attribute on the tree, uh, on the entity, not on the individual things. So the individual things are positioned relative to the entity, but now I could take the whole entity and move that. The beauty about the entity is now I don't have to create individual positions for uh, each of the components inside the entity. Again, think of the entity as just a box. So you throw, you throw a bunch of things in the box, and now you're just moving the whole box to a new location. So let's do position here. And let's do x. Uh, let's do an x of negative 5. Uh, we'll keep the y at 0, and let's do a z of negative 10. So you can see here, I didn't have to move back in the world because the tree is now in front of me because of that negative 10 z. So this looks great. You know, it does feel like a lot of code, and you might be thinking, I could have done this a lot quicker just going right into the HTML and creating this. That is true. But now here comes the beauty. I can take all of this code and make this into a function. So I'm going to create a function called create tree. And actually, I'll take it in two steps. Let's do it like this. And I'm going to grab all this code from in here, cut it out of here, and now put it inside of here. So if I run my program, you notice I lost a tree. I lost a tree because, if you recall, a function just houses code. We have to actually call the function. So let's go to our onload function and let's create, uh, let's write create tree. And now the tree is there. But it's not very flexible right now. The tree is always going to be there. So as part of a function, we can allow uh, for the function to accept arguments, uh, parameters, of values. So let's let the create tree accept new x values, new y values, and new z values. And let's take those values and use them in place of these hard coded values here. Now notice I'm only modifying the entity, I'm not modifying the other positions. The other positions are fine because they're relative to inside the container, the entity. So if I move the whole box, Everything inside moves along with it. So now up here, I can do a negative 5, uh, 0, and let's say a negative 10. And now I got the tree there. But the beauty is, let's say I want to create another tree. I could simply call create tree function again with new values. So I'm going to put this one at 2, and let's not send it back so far. Let's bring this tree a little closer. So let's say me a negative 4. 
And you can see now this tree is closer. Uh, let's create another tree. Uh, let's send this one uh, a lot further back. So let's do maybe a uh, 30. And you can see there's that tree back there. So using functions now, we're able to generate trees. Now, it's not being demonstrated in this video, but if you're familiar with a for loop, you could definitely take advantage of the for loop and then populate your world with a bunch of trees. So let's go back to our presentation and let's review what we've covered. So in this video of lesson 2.2, uh, we saw how we can create objects uh, and place them inside of an entity and then use the entity to kind of move everything around. We took all that code, placed it inside of a function, and now we were able to generate many versions of this uh, object that we created and position it in different worlds. Now we focus strictly on positions, but you can also um, explore rotations, scalings, you know, all those other attributes that you normally would have played with uh, when you were doing the A-frame in the HTML. So hopefully you're excited uh, about building objects and generating them with JavaScript. Enjoy.